that love him for the good of them who are called according to his purpose. Our address, physical services, 106 9th Road, King in Johannesburg. My number is plus 27824569264. You shall surely be blessed. May God bless you and I look forward to receiving you. Amen. Amen. This is Abi Adeniba. I'm the pastor of Shekinah Fellowship Ministry, and I'd love to give you this invitation to you and your family to join us on our services. On Sunday morning at half past nine is Bible class, and also at 10 a.m. is our celebration service till 12 noon. And also we stream these services from 10.30 for those of you who cannot make it to in-person service from half past 10 to 12 noon as well. And I want to just encourage you that come the way you are. And I promise you, by the will of God, you will leave a different person. Also, a midweek service is Tuesdays at half past six on Tuesday. That's a live broadcast on my Facebook at facebook.com. And that we give you curriculum from our Shekena Institute, which is on leadership and entrepreneurs. So please join us and you'll be blessed. Our address for in-person service is 106 Ninth Road, King, Santi, Johannesburg. My number, my WhatsApp is plus 27824569264. I look forward to receive you and may God bless you for receiving this invitation. God bless. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Good evening to everyone. Happy you coming to the end of the month of May. What a wonderful God we serve. And I just want to use the opportunity that we thank the Lord for bringing us to the last day of the month of May. And uh, it has been gracious. The fifth month of the year, 2022, has been gracious. And I use the opportunity to give thanks to the Lord, give him all the glory of all that we have experienced, that which he has done in our life and ministry and family, business, career. So we give God the glory for the month of May. And let us look forward to the month of June. It shall be an excellent month. It shall be a month to recap, a month to get hold of that which you have, you know, planned for this year. The month of June, a month for you to have the, the speed of the Holy Ghost for the rest of the year. May God bless you tonight as you join me on this class tonight uh, from Shekinah Institute. And tonight we're looking more into the aspect of faith of leaders. And today I want to share about uh, vulnerability in spiritual leadership. You know, I've been talking about as uh, uh, this vulnerability because it's just a model by which you know we come to some level of authenticity, genuity, and you know in our relationship, you know vulnerability helps you to express yourself, to say to those whom you love that you love them with all sincerity, and also to make yourself open in a situation that demands the reality. And so tonight I want to talk about vulnerability in spiritual leadership. Father, we thank you for the word of today. I thank you for the teaching of tonight. And I pray that you vocalize your mind through my mouth tonight to the rest of the world and those who are listening to this session. May God bless you. And I thank you for watching and giving time to Shekinah Online Pulpit. Now, vulnerability is a power tool to overcome, you know, certain things of life where we face a situation that we cannot ordinarily put ourselves forward. But when we embrace this model of vulnerability or the heart of vulnerability, we will become more, you know, expressive and, you know, open to some new abilities because, you know, vulnerability you know, invites certain criticism, 
invite certain, you know, unexpected that can work out to your good. You remember in Romans 8, uh, verse 28 says, For all things work for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. So whilst you are in the purpose of God, you cannot avoid but be vulnerable in order to express the purpose that is within you and among the people that you serve. So in spiritual leadership, we also know that spiritual leadership uh, is a position that is um, highly, you know, revered. And it, it, we, are, we, we are also, you know, uh, including myself, there's so much expected of us. We encourage people, we teach people, we teach the word of God, we express, you know, confidence in the Lord. But there, are, there will be a time when we need to express reality, when we have to, you know, uh, show that human part of us even in our spiritual work. And so today, I'm just looking at that. How do we embrace vulnerability in spiritual leadership or in your spiritual life or in making impact on other people by your faith life? So we are saying that uh, vulnerability is to be susceptible to harm, to criticism, and other sorts that you do not expect. But then with this model, when you act on faith, you take actions of faith, you are not being hindered. You are not being intimidated because of who you are and what you believe. You know, the Bible says in Acts 17, it says in you we live, in you we have our being and leave. And so, it's so important that we must embrace this vulnerability to really show who we are in Christ Jesus. You know, some leaders lived on this premise while some are pretentious, some are in self-denial, yet they teach what they cannot practice. And this it's not that they cannot practice it, but they cannot bring themselves to a situation to say, yes, I did this. Yes, I accept this. I'm yet to, you know, get to this level. You know, in Matthew chapter 16, let me share some few words with us. In Matthew chapter 16, we can see um, one experience where the Lord himself, you know, put himself at a vulnerable position. And we saw the reaction of one of the disciples in Matthew chapter 16. Now, here Jesus was more or less predicting the future of his ministry and what he has to go through. The Bible says from verse 21, from the time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. And then we saw that Peter one of the senior apostles, took him aside and said to him, Peter took him aside and, and began to rebuke him. And began to rebuke him and says, Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. But, you know, the Lord has made himself known concerning his purpose. You know, sometimes if you don't express your purpose, you will not be understood. You may not fulfill the will of the Father. And so, he made himself vulnerable to this position. And Peter said, no, it's not you. It can never be you. But the Lord turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block. To me, you do not have in mind the concerns of God. 
but merely human concerns. And so we can see here that the Lord made himself susceptible by revealing his end purpose, by revealing the, the, the will of the Father concerning him, concerning his ministry. You know, sometimes we need to express the vision of our ministry because the vision of your ministry describes who you are. You cannot be someone else. The purpose which God has called in, into ministry describes who you are. So you cannot hide away from who you are. So vulnerability in spiritual leadership helps you to be more authentic. It helps you to, to show those who are following you the way that God has appointed you and the way, what he has called you to do. So vulnerability is so important for us to embrace. It reveals you know, a total person that you are, both your spiritual and your humanity. And so we have seen even the Lord says categorically, I must go to Jerusalem to suffer. And that is his ministry. So this helps you to, you know, to declare the essence of our of your ministry calling. What we are called to preach describes the purpose for which we are in ministry. What we are called to preach. Some of us are called to preach deliverance. Some of us are, are evangelists. Some of us are apostles. Some of us are teachers and pastors. And so, you know, being vulnerable is sometimes to express what you are in ministry. It might open you up to some criticism. It might open you up to some debasement. But nevertheless, it's a source of strength for you to fulfill what you are called to do. Spiritual leadership. These are highly influenced individuals who lead sons and daughters into their destiny according to God's agenda. And so the vulnerability will help each and every one of us, spiritual leaders, to unmask ourselves as leaders. That we are in human body by the grace of God, we access divinity and we also function in our humanity. humanity. We access the divinity, divinity and we also function in our humanity. This is what vulnerability will help you to express and to declare. Therefore, understanding vulnerability as a state of being vulnerable is what it is. Being open to harm, being open to persecution, being open to high level of criticism, because you express your faith, you express your beliefs, and you will become more authentic in your leadership. And in this case of being vulnerable, of being vulnerable, you also let off your guard when it's impossible. You let off your guard. Therefore, you are open to whatsoever anyone will say just because of what you believe. And again, we also look at whilst we are vulnerable as spiritual leaders, when mistakes, mistakes occur, it exposes spiritual leaders to attacks and condemnation. And this happens in people's life. But the way you respond, the way you handle the attacks that follows, we also demonstrate the heart of vulnerability quotient. Rather, it reveals your vulnerability quotient. How, to what extent do you want to expose yourself? To what extent do you want to acknowledge your mistakes? But we've seen those who have made mistakes 
and they have really you know come out to retract and to withdraw what they have said which is not in line with the truth i gave you an example some time ago about benny Hinn, who came out expressively to regret his teachings about pros- about prosperity gospel you know sell monetizing the gospel asking you to give one thousand dollars and this is what god can do for you he has come out to say this has been wrong gospel approach and that is a high level of vulnerability is one of my models and i really appreciate benny Hinn for coming out to condemn and to retract the wrong messages about prosperity that is vulnerability of a spiritual leader and he's become much stronger than before and god's grace is upon him now but we have seen some cases where mistakes happen if not by error of gospel but by you know um by weakness human weakness among spiritual leaders you know some will come out to acknowledge the mistakes while others will simply ignore the critics and go about their business as normal yet they carry the fabrics of of you know of a lower moral standard some walk away from it so we 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 see quite a lot but no one is above mistakes but i'm saying this in this vulnerability in spiritual leadership because the the moral demand of the society leadership begins from the top and so spiritual leadership there's so much that god expects of us but when our human aspect defeats us we need to find a way having settled with god we also need to acknowledge with the people that are with us or the people that we lead therefore a leader's vulnerability is a fact to acknowledge. It's a fact to acknowledge in developing your power of influence in the society. It shows your strength. It shows your courage. It shows your faith. It demonstrates, you know, yet you have your human part and you also have the divine part of you or spiritual part of you. It strengthens your emotional connection with the people you lead when you come to that level of vulnerability you show yourself as it is you 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 express yourself as who you are and you also acknowledge where certain things have gone wrong where decisions have been wrong so it strengthens you emotionally rather than living in deception or self denial and you lose that connection with the people. Amen. Now, another aspect before I close is when we talk about vulnerability in spiritual leadership. In the area of faith, in demonstrating faith, in looking at the facts of life or facts of situations and what we believe, we must be able to express how we practice our faith as well we cannot deny ourselves of what we preach and also want to deny other people in other words what i'm saying is this if you preach faith and you cannot demonstrate it genuinely it's a deception so embracing the art of vulnerability will do one thing. Number one, it enables you to express your human side even when you are weak, when you are sick, when you are hospitalized, when you, you have financial difficulties, when you have, you know, even you have marriage problems. You know, being vulnerable is letting off your guard of what is going on in your life. When, as a spiritual leader, it's letting off God of what is going on in your life. You, it, it makes you more authentic as a human before being a spiritual man. And so, this art is for us to be 
you know, genuine with the people that follows us or people that look, you know, they look after, they look up to us. So, for example, if you take medication, if you take medication and you preach against medication of illness, you know, really, that is not balance. That is creating a facade, using faith, but you're not, you're practicing it in a different way. Or, for example, you tell your congregation to have faith for healing, but they should not take medicine. But you, you take medicine. You go to hospital. You don't even announce when you're in hospital or when you're going to see your doctor. That is high level of deception. That's a facade. And so as spiritual leadership, as spiritual leaders, where you understand what vulnerability is, it's actually a source of courage for you to be able to explain what you've gone through in order to teach faith. Vulnerability explains, helps you to explain the difficulties that you have gone through in order, in order for you to teach about your belief, about trust in the Lord, you need to also express what you have gone through, which only by trusting God helps you out of it. You cannot just be superhuman. You cannot be superhuman. You cannot claim that you, you have ever been debt free. You cannot claim that you have not, you know, uh, I've been sick before. That is high and high level of deception. But by you being vulnerable, telling your story, and how God took you through, you will be able to impart that word of faith much effectively. That's what I'm trying to get to. So you may be a pastor, you may be a bishop. You cannot hide away when reality faces you and this is what it is so it 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 makes you to be stronger as a teacher of faith for example as a teacher of the miracle of god but if you want to say you have never find yourself at a crossroad you've never find yourself in front of a red sea that everything has just been smooth no, that may be a deception. But when you teach faith and you demonstrated that God gave you that rod of faith to part your sea, the prayer dynamics, the, the seed sowing, the, 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 the act of it, then you can be able to teach faith effectively. And that is what I'm trying to drive at. But unless you embrace vulnerability, the art of vulnerability, you may not be able to teach certain things effectively. Otherwise, it's going to be an art of deception. So, vulnerability just helps you to play an open faith, open belief, and serving the Almighty God and leading the people to heaven. Definitely, there must be reality of heaven. We can teach it. But you must also first believe in it. So, tonight, I'm just saying, this model of vulnerability helps us to lead people right and helps us to teach and to demonstrate what we teach and to live also what we teach. You know, because at times... Um, faith can be an extreme when occasion demands reality. Faith can be an extreme. So that's why I said earlier, if you are not willing to talk about one sickness you have had, you are afraid of being vulnerable to criticism, to persecution. But when you are open and share your story, you will not. You will be seen as a model of faith. You will be seen as, as a vessel of faith, as a model, you know, who have experienced faith and healing in the power of the Lord.
So this act of vulnerability enhances your courage to teach what you believe and what you have experienced. You remember in First John, First John chapter one, Apostle John said something. He says that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, and he says which we have looked and our hands have touched. Said this we proclaim concerning the word of life. That's powerful. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. What we, our hands have touched, what we have looked, what our eyes have seen, this we proclaim. Therefore, I'm saying today, you know, in spiritual leadership, you cannot preach what you have not seen. You cannot preach effectively what you cannot, you know, give a witness of. And that's what vulnerability will help us to achieve so that we can really, you know, make impact for God. And that means that our testimonies of the good things of God is not limited to what people can easily embrace. Like, oh, God bless me with financial breakthrough. God bless me with, you know, some piece of land. But what about how God saved you when you are sick? What about how God restored your marriage? What about how God restored you when you are even living in sin? How about that? How can you teach somebody who is living in sin and you are telling them that you can come out of that sin without you telling them how you came out of sin at the time? And so this um, model is just uh, saying to all, to us leaders, including myself, that we need to embrace vulnerability, you know, which is opening ourselves to criticism, but then it strengthens our position as authentic leaders. It strengthens our leadership by example. And this is what this note is to achieve. So finally, we have to be confident by embracing this model. Rather, it makes us to be confident to share our story, our background, the live events that we have seen which have impacted our trajectory of faith. This is what vulnerability can do, that you are able to share your story. You are able to tell those events in your life which has proven God in your life. And, and, and that, that is what this vulnerability is all about. You cannot be a superhuman. You cannot be a superhuman, or a superman. You cannot be a superman. You are first a man before you become a spiritual man. You know, and that's, how, and, and that's a transition. That's a transition from this natural to supernatural. But what were those things that we have gone through before we ascend that level, as to teach those also who are looking up to ascend that. So, so it, it, this is interesting for me, and I also want to show us that even Apostle Paul also said something that reveals his vulnerable position in his writing. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 12, it says, I know how to get along with humble means and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both having abundance and suffering need. You know, we, we can also look at this text. It reveals that Apostle Paul also had difficulties in his time. It reveals that he had difficulty. That, you know, he's saying to us here that he, he knows 
how to go hungry, both having abundance and suffering needs. And it's, it's so important that we see through the characters in the Bible, the apostles, what they have gone through, have said concerning the Lord. And here, Apostle Paul, he says, he wrote in his letter to the Philippians, saying, no, I've, I've seen hunger before. So there is nothing wrong as spiritual leader while we are trying to teach about the trust in the Lord. And we are not able to also express when we once lacked. When we once lacked. I mean, a friend of mine uh, who turned 50 recently, he, he, he shared the story of his early life, how he was attacked by ham robbers, how you know, he had an accident. I mean, really, how his wife also was attacked. And it gave a background of their trajectory of, of faith. And that strengthens somebody's faith. He cannot teach faith without expressing his life experiences, which God has taken him through. And so, the model of vulnerability is to, is to explain what we have gone through and to explain how God has taken us through. So vulnerability for spiritual leaders is so key element of effective leadership and leading people through to Christ. To trust in the Lord is so important that we also you know, share our story. And so we saw that Apostle Paul also shared when he had inadequate resources at the time of his ministry. For some people, you may be going through, or you may have gone through when the church cannot pay rent, when the church cannot pay its staff. It can become a story today, but since you trusted in the Lord, the Lord took the ministry. They took you through into abundance. Let us also share those stories when we could not pay rent, when we could not pay our staff. Those are the needs of the early time that we can use to teach other people. But you need to be ready to be vulnerable, to share your time of need now that you and living in prosperity. You need to share the time of your need, a spiritual leadership, how you trusted God, and it came through for you. He came through for you. I mean, I shared my own story so many times, you know, when I was jobless, or when I was sharing room with about four other guys. That's, that's, that, that's how you can be vulnerable. Anyone can say whatever they like, but we are trying to teach faith. We are trying to express the, the, the trust in the Lord. We're trying to teach that even though your beginning may be small, but your later days shall be increased. Hallelujah. And so that is what we are learning today. So we need to be bold to express. We need to be bold to express whatever maybe was past, whatever we have gone through in our spiritual leadership. And so that is what um, we want to achieve tonight. And I pray that the word that I have said tonight will, you know, encourage you in your work of your spiritual work and your leadership style. That vulnerability is a model to embrace, you know, um, you know, occasionally that you embrace it, you know. And it's also a high level of emotional intelligence. You know, when you embrace vulnerability, it's, it's a high level emotional intelligence that you are really, you know, putting up in order to, you know, uh, lead your people right by sharing with them what has gone in the past and which has taken you or which has made you to be strong in the present. And you see that you will thrive in your relationship, even in your marriage, in your people that you follow. And God will surely promote you 
And God will continually, you know, trust you with great and mighty things as you lead people, as you let them share the time and also share the story of your glory. May God bless you tonight. And I want to say thank you for listening to me. And I pray that the Lord will continue to strengthen you as you lead your people and have remain confident in the Lord for whatever that you believe God for. You know, remain confident in the Lord. It shall surely bring you to that level of balance. It shall surely perfect those things that you believe Him for. But let us, you know, where we need to share our need, where we need to share our inadequacies, let us share it and God will surely, you know, bring about increase. You know, even in John chapter 6, we saw the Lord he, he, though he knew what he would do, but he asked them, what do we have? He asked them, what do we have in the kitty? They said, 200 dinari. I mean, there's nothing it can do. But he knew what he would do. But he first of all asked them, what can we give these people? He did not just command from heaven, but no, he received the little that the boy had and he gave thanks. He gave thanks and the 5,000 men were fed. But the Lord expressed the need to feed the people, though he knew what he would do. So sometimes as vulnerability is for us to express our need, to express what we want done. But God has a way to bring it to pass and into abundance. So that is what vulnerability is. So be free today as a leader. Be free today to talk about the past, to share what you have gone through, and God will surely promote you. And surely, God will surely you know, bring you to that level where you, know, you call those things that be not as if they are. Because he knows that you are a man of faith, you are a man of integrity and he will surely continue to bless you and bless your ministry. Thank you for listening. And I pray that the word we have shared tonight, you can replay it. It surely bless you and you take some few things out of it in order to you know, lead even right from your homes. Vulnerability is necessary. Right from the home, you can, you can embrace the model. To lead your family, to lead your business, to you know, to lead the people. So it's not just spiritual, but yes, we're just talking about spiritual leadership because of so much of deception that is out there. But in your business, in your homes, please let it come to reality when there is need to be real. You have to come to that reality. You have to be real, and surely more respect will come for you, and you know. You, 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 you lead with freedom, not leading and watching your back. You no, know? you just have to be simple. I want to bring you to a close tonight. May God bless you for listening, and I'll see you again by the grace of God the coming week. So, thank you for listening. This has been Abe Adeniba from Shekana Institute, right here in Johannesburg. Today, I've spoken about vulnerability. In spiritual leadership and I pray that something new will be coming your way again. God bless you and I'll see you another time. Amen.
He has died for you to remove condemnation from your life. 